very good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome on this new video on Remnant from the Ashes. My name is Ogandersis and today I'll give you 10 tips for hardcore mode. Hardcore mode has dropped a couple of weeks ago and there's many people that already completed it, including myself. But there's also people that has not been able to push through. So I thought, why not making a tips video? And here we are. <laughs> tips! Now this may sound very basic to you, but when you make your hardcore character, make it in normal difficulty. I went through the game in normal the first time I did it, and with the first character I did in hardcore, I arrived to the very last boss. And then I died for a stupid mistake. But that's not the point, like the point is that I went through the whole game and I killed every boss in normal mode. And since there's no special rewards to playing hardcore in nightmare or hard mode, there's no reason for not going in normal if what you're looking for is only unlocking the new items. I've been trying already more than a couple of characters in hard mode and I die, <laughs> I, I die, like, it doesn't matter how hard I try, I die. Um, some of them die very early, some of them die late in the game. The farthest away I was able to push through a character in hard mode for now is Rom. I didn't finish Rom, I died against the Claviger and uh, that's it. And I died in a stupid way as well. <laughs> I only die in stupid ways, apparently. Now, your top priority all the time in any given situation is surviving. There are no second chances, so you need to evaluate every situation. You need to decide if it's worth going for an item or you want to skip it and stick with what you already have because it brought you up to the point you are now always keep in mind that yes there is a very juicy item maybe in front of you maybe in that dungeon that you may want to clear but you arrived where you are with what you have so there's no reason for not continuing with it of course if you follow this statement literally you're gonna end up being at the end of the game with your initial equipment, which you don't want, like you want to get something along the way because you want to build your character in a certain way that suits your playstyle in a comfortable way for yourself and it also gives you advantages against what you're going up next. So again, always evaluate situations, decide if they're worth or not. If you're attempting an hardcore character, you probably already played before the game, so you know what's coming after. Now, when you create your character, you need to have in mind already a couple of builds that you want to go with. And I say a couple of builds because it may happen that you don't find everything for one build, but you find stuff for another build. Or you can find things that are completely different to what you were expecting or what you were hoping for. And that's okay, you need to be able to adapt to what you find. Of course, we have adventure mode, you can try to roll a world over and over to get something that you really want. But again, is that worth it? In my opinion, it's not, because you expose yourself to danger without a real reason. Because yes, you can get the, that piece of equipment you want, but if you die in the process, it will be all for nothing. When you need to choose your character, choose either Hunter or Ex-Cultist. The Scrapper is of no use. And in my opinion for Arcor, it's better to go for the Hunter. And for one specific reason, because all of your gear is focused in range damage. Which is exactly what you want, you want to try to stay as far as you can from your enemies. You want to see them, that they need to be like little dots on your screen. The closer you get to your enemies, the higher are the possibility for them to harm you, eat you, and kill you. You can go Excultist if you like the mod Regenerating Power, but at the beginning of the game you only have one mod, which sure will heal you, but we have items to do that. Also the Spirit Trait is very powerful, but very later on, because it's not something that you want to focus at the beginning of the game. For the best possible start, 
no matter what kind of class you chose. You want to get the SMG inside War 13 and you want to buy the anti-rifle as soon as you can. Again, we are trying to survive as long as possible, so staying away from enemies is mandatory. Also, while you're getting the SMG in the process, change your clothes, wear the basic sets that give you more chances to drop scrap from destroying items and basically destroy everything in the world. That will give you a good amount of scrap to spend in whatever equipment or mod you might need before leaving. Out in the world, the first thing you want is to get Rattleweed. It's not that difficult, chances are on your side, it's 50-50, you either get Gorefist or the Shroud as first boss in the first dungeon. And Gorefist is completely useless. If you find Gorefist, just reroll your ward immediately. In fact, the mock that it gives you is Mantle of Thorns and it can be useful for some specific build, but in general it's not as good as Rattleweed because Mantle of Thorns makes you stronger against melee attacks and reflect melee damage, but you ideally never want to get that close to an enemy to allow them to melee you. While Rattleweed, on the other hand, does completely the opposite, in fact, you can shoot it anywhere and it will attract your enemies, and this will give you time to shoot at the back of the enemies, or trying to heal you, or use a booster, or run away, anything really, but you will basically have a good 10 seconds to breathe while you're in the middle of a fight, and that is really important. Another thing that you want to absolutely to get in your world is Mudtooth, the old guy inside the helicopter. That guy sells two items that will cost 500 scrap each and they will respectively increment your HP and stamina by 25 points and that is a huge number. Also they will last one hour and that is also a huge number. You want to use those two items before every boss battle, no matter how easy you think it's gonna be. There's always the chance for you to end up in that kind of situation when you need extra HP. When you are pressured by your enemies, when you are cornered, you have no stamina, and then you wish you could add a little bit more stamina. Maybe just enough to roll once more. Don't take any chances, you can farm 500 scrap again, but you cannot respawn. Know your enemies, especially bosses. You have one try at this. You want to get the best you can out of it. If you don't remember the boss before fighting him, maybe it's a good idea to go and fight them with your main character first. Just to refresh your memory, just to remember how to fight against the boss. What are the best tactics? What are the attacks that he makes more often? Which one of those are hard to dodge? What's the easiest way to fight against it? All of these things are important. At the beginning of the game, you will get Elder Knowledge. Now, if you're like me, who's always try to get the most out of what he's doing, maybe you have the feeling that you should max out Elder Knowledge first. In this way, you may think to get points quicker and that will help you to grow your character faster. But that's wrong. You're gonna spend 19 points on Elder Knowledge for 25% more XP. One entire run in normal mode, just going through the story by doing every dungeon and killing every boss, you will get roughly level 100, 110. That means that 19 points spent on Elder Knowledge are going to be roughly that 25% more that Elder Knowledge will grant you. I don't want to start throwing numbers at you, but if you do ignore Elder Knowledge, you will more or less end up being with the same amount of threat points at the end of the story. Maybe 5 less that you should have. Elder Knowledge gives you back what you spent on it, but very later on in your character development is something that you want to focus on for the long run. And you don't know if your character is gonna have a long run and by focusing on your long term you will actually increase the chances to have a short life. Because you're gonna spend important points at the very beginning of the game when you are weak 
and you need to get stronger fast in order to improve something that it doesn't give you any immediate benefit. In my opinion, the first thing you need to do is to bring vigor and endurance at least a 10 10, at least. And then of course max them out as soon as you can. But if you want to focus in other traits, fair enough, like if you want to upgrade spirit, fair enough, you can. But again, add the knowledge is not something you want to focus on for an hardcore character. A couple of bonus tips here. Do not upgrade your equipment too often because the game scales with you, I'm sure you know, but every time you do upgrade your equipment you get stronger in the area you currently are, but once you pass that area and you go to the next section, the enemies will scale up to match your strength. And also the game does scale up no matter what in certain points. So if you do upgrade too much, you will end up make the enemy stronger than you. And that means that you're gonna die. There are some players, like me, who rather die than use a potion in the moment of need. Since I'm one of them, I can tell you that this is for a couple of reasons. Some of us are just greedy on their items, some of us want to make it without the item because we love the challenge, or like in my case, because it makes you feel stronger at the game. For the love of God, if you're one of us, force yourself to use the items. I know it's hard, but you can buy them again, or you can live with the shame or uh, to use a couple of potions on top of your dragon hearts against that boss because it was too strong. If they're there, they're meant to be used. And that's it. Okandersis, signing off.